Hello, uh, I'm here to talk about what I learned this week in my module 13. Uh, this week we we're talking about recognizing, assessing behavior, and using self in working through opposition to change throughout the helping process. And uh, the first thing I would like to talk about are two vital tools in working through opposition to change in regards to you know, social work. So uh, two vital tools in working through opposition to change I learned this week are one, uh, motivational, motivational interviewing or change talk. And this is an, uh, it's a client-centered directive. Uh, it's, it's a method for enhancing the motivation to change. Uh, this method is a way to give the client autonomy for change, but is still somewhat confrontational about what the client is doing to hinder the helping process. So you still, you know, come off because when you when you need change, there is some sort of confrontation that has to happen in order for change to occur. It doesn't just happen naturally. Uh, so that is one really interesting tool that I, I learned was the motivational interviewing. So in this, uh, you actually are kind of motivating, you're evoking uh, uh, autonomy in the client and it helps them to change and better themselves. And number two is positive connotation. And this is a tool used to reduce threat level in regards to the client's feelings regarding change because change for anyone is scary and intimidating and it can produce a very emotional reaction. So if you think about, you know, even if you're at work and somebody is like, hey, you know, he did it this way and like, I want you to, you need to do it this way. You know, if you're so used to doing something one way, a change can be kind of intimidating or you might get a little offended, you know, because your way is still right, but it's just not the way the company wants it. So if you think about your own emotions to change, that's what a client feels. Uh, this technique the positive connotation technique will allow you to explore not only the client's perceptions of the change, but it'll also help you explore your own behavior. So you might see the behavior as, you know, canceling appointments or showing up late or not really being engaged in, in the appointment, in the session as negative, but the client sees it as a positive thing because they're trying to avoid the change there. So they see it as a positive and maybe they're doing it because of your own behavior. You know, if they think that you're being too pushy or something, and it, it also allows you, this method allows you to evaluate yourself as well. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is discussing my ability to recognize and assess behavior and use of self and working through opposition to change throughout the helping process. So I had to do a skills development exercise this week where um, I had to assess certain behaviors and then come up with what I would say as a social worker to some of those behaviors. So let me give you an example. Okay, so uh, in one of these, the client, after she had an emotional prior session this session, you know, she yawns, she looks out the window, and she says, you know, oh, there's not much to talk about. You know, not much to talk about this week, not anything happened. And the behavior that she is engaging in is actually disengaging from the social worker and holding back from not wanting to further the discussion of what happened last week. And my possible change strategy that I came up with was the motivational change strategy. So evoking the client to explore her emotions and feelings about the previous week will assist her in wanting to open up this week. And so that was one of the examples that I had. Another one where I actually had to come up with what I would say to the client. So uh, the clients in this scenario were a married couple in their 30s uh, and they're in their first session 
And the, the wife says, you know, that she's tired of being knocked around. And the husband says, well, I wouldn't, you know, knock you around if you knew your place. And he looks at the social worker and says, why don't you, like, now you can finally tell her, like, what to do so that I, you know, she'll believe me. Um, so this is manipulative behavior. That's what I assessed it as. The husband is attempting to have control over the practitioner based on his initial response of tell her what her first priority is. And as a practitioner, I decided that what I might do is respond in a direct way to both parties. A possible response would be to the husband. Uh, my job is to understand what the underlying issues are between you and your wife, not to put anyone in their place, but to show each of you what you may be doing to harm your relationship. And then to the wife, I would say, what's your biggest concern about this knocking around and how would you describe it? And those were two, those are two uh, examples of how I assessed behavior and how I kind of used myself in the helping process. Uh, but my ability to use myself in the helping process was somewhat of a challenge. It was easy to, for me to identify the emotions and feelings of the clients. <laughs> That's my daughter. But uh, using myself to come up with responses was a little difficult, but the, that's something that I would definitely have to work on. And that is all I have to talk about this week. Uh, thank you for stopping by and listening. Have a great day.